Welcome to this morning's session. Uh, we've got an amazing amount of stuff to get through today, so I'm going to go really fast. So what we're going to talk about today, I guess, is a few things. When I submitted the talk, there was a number of different titles. We could have gone conversational product design, designing in the age of AI, but we sort of settled around here, which is Lean UX versus the chatbots. Lean UX is something that I sort of specialize in. Hands up, who's heard of that? Oh, low hands. Okay, hands. Ooh, I won't ask who practices. It could be even less than. So what that means basically is we're trying to find the fastest way to validate uh, problems and solutions in rapid order, rather than being uh, big upfront design. Which you know, if you've worked in a corporate in the past, you might spend. Uh, you know, I remember back in the day spending a year with Telstra doing designs that never saw the light of day. It's a big waste of money, right? Um, then I'm suspicious for all of you guys. Who's in UX here? Okay, so there's a lot of other people here that aren't designers, so that's very interesting. So we're all here because I think in the last year, uh, over 30,000 plus developers creating bots. Uh, the last CES, Alexa pretty much stole the show. Who doesn't know what Alexa is? Oh, that's a winner, okay. Um, and companies started uh, embedding Alexa left, right and centre. So if you look at the things there from cars to toys to washing machines, the, the whole sort of range. And we also see the push towards art artificial intelligence really, really accelerating now. Um, there's a terrible clickbait thing going around at the moment about Facebook pulling the plug on AI that created its own language. That's not true. Um, yeah, sorry guys. It's not, the way they frame it is, uh, is like, oh, oh my God, we didn't know what it was doing, it was out of control. Uh, it's not actually true, but um, Google's DeepMind has done a few things that are interesting in that, that vein. And the Facebook one thing is interesting as well. Two interesting things from DeepMind. One was they had two competing AIs, three, sorry. One was like, okay, you're not in the group, I'm not gonna tell you any of my secrets. And the other two were passing secrets between each other and the, the first one would keep on trying to get in. The other two came up in more and more complex ways of keeping the other AI from understanding what was going on. In the process, they created encryption that no human knows how it works or understands how to break it. Step one, end of the world. Um, the other one that they did that was interesting was they looked at language translation. Normally you do language translation, translation in pairs, English, Spanish, Spanish, German, and that means you can go backwards and forwards in those two pairs. Uh, but what DeepMind did was work out that if I create a meta language, i.e. a language in the middle, I'm gonna go German meta language. That means even without being trained, now I can go German to Spanish, even though I've never seen the, the translation between those things because I know Japanese, Spanish. So that's quite interesting as well. Uh, again, not asked to do that, worked it out on its own. So lots of stuff going on there. And the third one, I guess, the Internet of Things and the convergence of all three. Um, there's some sort of talk about we're at the beginning of the next phase of interface evolution. So you could say we had paper, uh, Gutenberg Press, radio, TV, web, mobile, and then where we are now. Um, another way of thinking about it is in the past, if we wanted information, we'd ask an expert human. We'd seek out the person that knew the most and we'd go and ask them a question. Now, if you look at the other end of the spectrum, we're probably going to a place where we'll just address expert systems, so expert AI. So that's all very good. Got that under five minutes. Um, so how are we going to use chatbots as a design tool? So what we're going to do today, we're going to do some thinking, making, testing, and iterating. So I'm going to take you through uh, a course this morning in 90 minutes that normally takes a day. So you're going to see a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff hidden in this pack, but you'll get the whole pack. So don't freak out if I'm doing stuff and you're like, uh, I didn't see it when you did that, and then you clicked it and changed it because you'll get the whole pack and you'll be able to um, look into it in more detail. But what you will be able to experience is is the benefit of these things. Okay? So just because everyone likes a list, uh, I'm going to give you eight principles for bot design more broadly. 
So it's very much aligned, I think, with the traditional sort of UX process. Uh, you've got to know why you exist. So what's the purpose of you as a bot? You've got to understand the complete customer journey. So we're going to look today at a, a restaurant booking um, service. We're going to imagine that, we're going to test it as a bot, but we could imagine that this could be a web page or some other way of capturing this information or a person. So we can look at it from a service design perspective as well. Um, for bots, I think the, possibly the most important thing is build empathy and resilience. What do I mean by that? Uh, I personally hate Siri with a passion and uh, the only time I've opened it in the last three years has been trying to do something else and it comes up by accident. So that's a, an example of where you've got a system with sort of either me with very low uh, resilience or a system that doesn't have good resilience in that you, when you fail, you put people off very quickly. The example I use for this would be if you go to a restaurant and you've got uh, a waiter that's very snobby but also very bad at his job, your sort of empathy and resilience to that experience is very low. If you go to a restaurant and the, the guy says, hey, it's my uh, first day on the job, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure exactly what I'm doing, but if you give me a hand, I'll try and make everything as, as good as possible for you. You already set the scene there to have a little bit more empathy and resilience. My hypothesis is that for Apple, they set Siri as a genius with the answer to life, the universe and everything. And then you ask a simple question and, and it fails. So that's the disconnect there. Um, you need to control the conversation and you'll find out if, if you take up and start to play with this in your own time, that the way that you respond and ask questions uh, open and closed can lead people down paths that you don't want them to go. So you might uh, ask questions that ha can only have a yes or no answer and that's sort of somewhat controlling. Uh, but you might also find out, wow, I, I can't control everything. I don't know exactly how this is going to work and hence the rapid prototyping. Um, that's why daddy doesn't have a job anymore. So artificial intelligence, use the data to be intelligent, uh, anticipatory, work out what benefit you're actually going to give. Uh, I, I sort of use the example of a hotel concierge that, you know, I fly into LA, I go to the hotel, they say, hi, Mr. Cho, hey, we've booked these uh, three restaurants for you tonight. We know you like to go there. Um, just let us know if you want to go to any of them or, or, or none of them, and we'll take care of it. So they've given me this upgraded experience because they know about me. The downside of that is obviously there's a creepy factor, right? So there's things that it's all right for you to know about me, and there's things that it's not so cool for you to know about me. You've probably all heard. The story, I think, I don't think it was Amazon, I think it was Target that was sending, uh, it worked out that uh, a gentleman's daughter was pregnant and started to send some marketing materials along those lines before the father knew. So, you know, got to be careful. Um, know who you are, and I put this here, it's really important that this is the thing that people get really excited about, oh, especially if you're in branding. Oh, we want to be really, have a really cool personality, you know, let's work on that. It's, it's pretty low down the list of things that you need to do. You need to do it, but it's far less important than making sure it doesn't break early on. The important thing about the empathy and resilience part is if you don't do that, people will have one shot at it and you won't get the habit forming and that's, then you're done. Um, respect the medium. So we're not going to talk a lot about design patterns for... Uh, conversational UIs. So if you thought that was going to be the case, sorry, it's, it's not happening. Uh, there's, you know, I think for those sort of things, there's loads of blog posts about there. You, you know, there's loads of sketch files you can download, you can look and dribble. There's all sorts of things for like, oh, this is thinking, talking, sent, etc. And launch, listen, train and repeat. So one of the big benefits of this, whether you do it through our method, which we're going to just use SMS, most accessible channel. Uh, most people here hopefully have phones. Um, we can get feedback immediately and improve this thing. When I have run this course before, uh, one of the participants was like, shouldn't we plan everything out? You know, should we map it all out? And I said, let's just get straight into it. 
and we're going to get feedback and you're going to discover things that you wouldn't have mapped anyway. So that's the whole point of Lean UX as a process is get something in front of people, uh, start getting hit early. Okay, so that's the end of me talking for a little bit, not that long. So meet Ryan. Ryan's trying to organise dinner for his parents and his sister's family. She just had a baby to welcome them to Sydney. He's pretty busy but considers himself a bit of a foodie. They're going to be here next week so he decides he will try and get everything sorted out during his lunch time. But when he calls, he gets the answering machine. So, number one, know your purpose. Why do you exist? We're going to do, who's done an empathy map before? Okay, you're going to be the rock stars on your table. So, we're going to start looking at a bit of a persona uh, problem in our opportunities. So this is like an empathy map, but, but slightly different. So what I'll get you to do, and you've got five minutes, so listen hard and work fast, is you've got post-it notes in front of you, you've got a big flip chart in front of you. One of you take command and divide the page up like that. So the, the bottom left, uh, what are the key needs of the user? What do they need to solve their problem? Uh, in real life, who would solve their problem? So start, everyone just writes down on post-it notes and starts sticking it down. Um, what sort of things would give them confidence and trust? So if I was trying to find out a restaurant to go to, uh, what are the things that make it seem like that's, that's a good restaurant? What are the pains? What are the things that stop the person from achieving the desired intention? Uh, and what will happen if they come true? And what would make their life better than the, the current way of solving this problem? So why would this be better than a person, a website, or an answering machine? The way to do this, just this is a sort of a sort of like an agile lean ceremony, is once you've drawn, good work guys, um, once you've drawn the thing, everyone just write down what you think and stick it down, and when you stick it down, just yell it out. So you don't need to discuss a lot, right? The, the purpose of that is as I write and I put it down, I don't have to look what you wrote because you said it, so I can use multiple senses. Okay, so I've got uh, pains, I uh, don't know what time you open, bang. Uh, are you open on Mondays? Does it, all those sorts of things. Questions? Five minutes? Rapid, thank you. Okay, great work, don't stress. This is really just to get a taste for things. You're not gonna win, I probably should have said that at the start. It's uh, difficult for you to complete this in, in five minutes, or a little bit impossible, really. Um, however, it's not over yet. So that your next task is you've got your problem buckets, and I want you to define, you know, you can just grab all the problems and anything else you think what are the criteria that Ryan needs to actually make the booking? And what does a restaurant need? So there's another, there's another sheet underneath. Just start to pop those down. What does Ryan need to make the decision? And what does a restaurant need? Okay, and, and, uh, and you're out of time. Okay, the power of listening, guys. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do now, guys, 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 um, like I said, we're going to run really fast, so now you can relax a little bit because I'm going to do the work for the next half an hour-ish, so pressure's on me, not on you, so take a little bit of a chill. Okay, guys, can I ask you to... Thank you. Um, so those of you who have done your sketch, take a photo of it. That's going to be your prototype that I want you to send to 10 of your friends to ask them to give you feedback on. Right? How, how you all feel about that? So um, if we were doing this whole uh, course in its entirety, we'd next look at where actually would this whole thing fit in. Um, and we do customer journey mapping. When we set up the scenario, we said he calls the restaurant and he gets the answering machine. So if you are thinking about trying to get a digital intervention somehow, 
that's probably the part where you want to get involved because if the existing behavior is either to call up a restaurant uh, before going online, let's say because they don't have a, a way to book online, then how do you actually uh, inject yourself into that experience? In the other workshops, what we do is we put a bot on the phone as well. So the, the bot can say, hey, we close right now. You can leave a message if you like, or you can uh, talk to me. If you don't feel comfortable talking to a robot, we can switch to SMS and we can just finish this off via chat. And so if they say via chat, start sending the text to them and they can start uh, conversing with the bot to make the booking. The important thing about that from a, a Lean UX and a, and a product prototyping perspective is you could just have nothing at the end of those and you'd understand how many people would be keen to go to the web, how many people are keen to just leave a message, how many people are keen to chat to a bot, how many people are keen to, uh, to talk to a bot. And that would give you some inkling around where you should invest. Right? So this is why it's about lean product design. So, my task. Boo. So, Rufus, the robot, it's his first day on his job. Uh, he knows how to take a reservation and that's about it. He doesn't know where the bathroom is or even if there is one. So, you've done the work for me. I need to know things like that you want to booking. Uh, I guess, hands up, how many people? How, how many people had how many people on their form? Great. What day? What time? Your name? What other groovy ones did you have? Just yell out. Special requests? Special requests. Yep. Phone number? Kids? Great. Anything else? Yeah, good. So we're going to get into that. We, I'll show you very quickly what tools we're going to use. Like I said, all of this will be in the pack. So we use a, a natural language processing tool called API.ai. It's recently acquired by Google. It's not super straightforward, but I'm going to try and make it as straightforward for you as possible. Uh, that's why I wanted to race through these bits so I could sort of slow down in, in this bit. Um, you don't have to do this, but that's just to show you the instructions are there. And we're going to do the communications workflow with uh, Upwire. Um, and that allows you to do the phone bit as well as the uh, text bit and any follow-up on top of that. So you can build this whole sort of communications system to prototype your experience. So what I'll show you. So this is API.ai. And we just introduced you to the idea of there's a few things. There's... Uh, the, the primary concept is something called an intent. So you kind of just sort of talked about those. I want to make a booking. Uh, another one is, so we've got three there. The default welcome intent, the default fallback intent, and the table booking intent. All right, so this sounds not blowing anyone's mind yet. Or anyone like slow down? Um, default fallback is when I don't understand what's going on. Okay, so that's where we would look when we start to build resilience. Default welcome intent, self-explanatory, yeah? Anyone go, no, what are you talking about? It's just like if you say hi, what does it do? There's another part of that, how we can build resilience and em empathy into that one as well. And then the table booking intent, right? So this is kind of like us doing the form that you just did. Um, so this is a really, really basic one. Uh, what you do, and I might get you to just spend one minute thinking of all the ways you can ask to book a table. Because what happens is, I just basically, in where it says user says, I just type those in here. So rather than giving you one minute, I might just go around the room. You want to book a table, what do you say? I want to book a table, okay. Points for flair. I want to, <laughs> to book a table. Okay, next. Do you have any tables for each of us? Mm. Interesting. Spanner in the works, Paulie. Yeah, that's right. yeah no, no, that's good, right? 
Ah, uh, now manners, people, see? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Someone, someone couldn't wait. <laughs> okay, okay. What did you say? Mm, from manners to just, just do it. <laughs> Book me at a table at 7.30. Ah, oh, yeah, well, you know. Robots are people too. Now, you see some groovy things happen there, right? So thank you, Miss Direct. Um, you see how I said book me a table at 7.30? And at 7.30 is gone, let's call it that colour. Being a man, we don't have lots of colours. Um, <laughs> and it's highlighted that. So that means it's automatically worked out that that's a time, right? So if we look down here, sorry for the rest of you that didn't get to your one out, you'll, you'll get a go. There's different things that we need to make this booking, right? And one of them is time. And I've created these. So if I removed one, or oh, it might blow everything up if I remove one. Um, so I've got first name, last name. Sorry? Mm -hmm. Correct, correct, yeah, the demo demons are, are numerous and powerful. Um, how many people, date, first name, last name, and time. So you see time here is colour-coded to that colour, <laughs> and it's mapped to here. So I'm going to throw, uh, and I should also mention, I have to tell everyone this, API.ai is kind of racist. You'll, you'll understand why in a second. Um, Racism isn't funny, people. Um, so if I say I'd, ooh, that's, I'd like a table at six for seven. Oh, everyone's freaked out. Yeah, that's right. So, it's, so it now doesn't know what I'm talking about, so I have to train it. So six, we kind of know that for six means the number of people, and the seven, the other way around, table at, oh, at six, sorry, you, oh, good work, guys. <laughs> Pro moves. Um, So now it's starting to get better at interpreting these things. And why, why chat is interesting is the forms that you guys have done, right, the sort of step by step by step, but I could say over here, um, and this is the, where I try it out before we do it on the phone, um, can I have a table next Wednesday at 6 p.m.? for three people. Let's say I'm going with people. Ah, broke it. Okay, so then what you do is cut and paste, put it here. Then everything except for this one. Right, now if I do it again, Yeah, yeah, so I, good, good call. Can I have a table tomorrow for five people at 7 p.m.? Okay, so it's, it's, if you can see down here, it's extracted all that data. It doesn't have first name or, or last name. Right, so the benefit of that is now I've got an unstructured way to collect data, it doesn't have to be bang, 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 bang. I'm just going to introduce you quickly to the thing that's most analogous, I guess, to creating a form, which is this idea down here of uh, the parameters that we need and this idea called slot filling. So slot filling, are these are things that I need to complete the task. So I need to know how many people, all the things that you've got there, right? Um, and over here is how you ask it. 
So if I, if I just went, I want a table. See how it's got, what's the first name? Oh, I might have, it hasn't. Yeah, it gets that and then it's trying to fill in the rest. So see here, I haven't defined prompts. I could just. Yes, that's right. It'll go through sort of boring, you know, what's your first name, what's your last name, uh, how many, etc. But if you, you can also just blurt it all at once, right? Um, and you can put the prompt in here. So this is for first name. Um, and let's try and make it break. What's your name? Uh, or we could, oh no, we shouldn't do that. Um, and we can define a different prompt here. Who wants to ask for the last name? What do you want to say? Did you just want to say family name? Okay, sure. I like it. <laughs> Good. So now you've sort of seen that I've done that, right? And you've seen that I can start to play with it. Yep, we all agree that it's going to break. It's pretty fragile. Um, let's try and break it again. Who wants to yell out? Back left, have you yelled out? I feel like you've been quiet. Ask, how are you going to ask for a booking? Oh. Is this API run automatically with every implementation? Yeah. So as long as it's verified, or is it not verified with your own implementation? You can go back into training, right? But we're going to. So, Great way of framing it, and this is why it's important when we'll get to that in a second. You see, it did get the booking time and it got the date, but it didn't get that it was a question. It just assumed I want a table for tomorrow, right? That's where we'll have to build up on, on these and the, the model will talk about that. Um, back table. Oh. <laughs> uh, how would you like to ask for a table? Ah, nice work. What's your name? Not telling you, is it? Okay. So, this is good work. Now, let's try and blow it up. It, you know, being the demo gods, it probably will blow up. Text this number, everyone. Um, and... Just do as you would do. Don't try and break it off straight off the bat because it is going to break. But then when you break it, I want you to write how you broke it on a post-it note. And then remember the person that sketched uh, the little form for the mobile? I literally want you to send that to five of your friends and ask for feedback. I don't see anyone taking photos and sharing that. Because we're gonna, what we're going to look at is what's the propensity to give feedback on an artifact? You sending this thing that you just did or you sending a chat out to people to play with? So just write things down as they break. good? I'm Henry. One person is sending that to five of their friends to ask for feedback. Like, would this form work? You know, can you, you know, so basically we use it testing two different things. One that you created very quickly, one that I created very quickly, and we're trying to get an idea of how easy is it to get feedback in different ways. So really trying to yeah, you just text, can I book a table for that? Yep. Yep, you just write it down. How did I break it? So 
So it's, it's quite slow, and it might, you know, it may blow up everyone hitting it at once, but we'll see. And just write down how you broke it. So I think we've already talked about a few ways that we've broken it by asking it qualifying questions, right? Yeah, I don't think this one knows he's Rufus. No, he's, he's like five minutes worth of work. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's slow. Yeah, yeah. So you're just stuck in the loop. So with, um, so if we have a software with open APIs, yep. we can um, like build chatbots for it. Yep. Like yeah, 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 yeah. For instance, I want to Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. So I assume everyone's broken it, right? So I should have loads of feedback, right? Probably 56 bits of feedback. Uh, that didn't take us very long to get some feedback to iterate on this product. And that's kind of the point of this talk. Not how well this thing performed, but how quickly I can get feedback. So if you have a, a group of people you want a, a product test with, you can do that very quickly. So some of the things that we heard that would break it are when you ask a qualifying question, right? So Anyone want to yell out things that, that broke it? Yep, and that broke it? Okay, great. All right, okay. That, what did you get back from that? Right, okay. So that's good? Ah, nice work, Gobba. That's a <laughs> okay, so... So the point of this is actually we're going to try and train the software. So all of these things we can now put back in uh, and try and train it to do a better job. So there's two parts of that. One is training it on the, the one intent. So for your one, for example, pretty straightforward, should have worked, didn't, we retrain it. For your one, was it, uh, can I get a seat by the window, was that you? Right, sorry. What was your one? Yeah, right. Um, they sort of fall into what I would call sort of qualifying questions. And then you start to understand a bit better about the customer journey. So Rufus is like an onion sort of backwards. So when you're designing these conversations, you sort of start off with the core task that you think needs to be done. I want to book a table. Okay, you want to book a table. I need these things. Turns out that people are a little bit more complex than that. There's things like qualifying questions. And where that becomes complex is people aren't necessarily linear in their thinking, as I'm sure you're aware. You may ring up and say, hi, do you have uh, anything near the window tomorrow night? And that's the qualifying question. And if you do, then I'll move on, right? You might also get halfway through the process, I might be saying, what's your last name? And you go, oh, do you have vegan meals? Because you only just remembered about your friend. And you can imagine that's, uh, that, that's where you start to add complexity, where I need to be able to fork out of the question because there's no real, if you were just building um, a straight form, you wouldn't really have the ability to halfway through filling in, you, could, you couldn't put in, what's your last name? Do you have vegan meals, right? The benefit of this as well is if you didn't have that in your form, I know a lot of you had uh, dietary requirements, but who didn't? Come on. Yeah, okay. Maybe. So maybe there's one person out of 15 of you, right? If you're all vegan, sure. Uh, or it might be 
when I did this and I sent it to a friend and he sent it back and said, oh, I said I was allergic to corn and didn't know what to do. And I was like, <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. Um, and then that sort of to puts that into it. And that, the, the, the challenging part about that is the qualifying questions can come at any stage during the process. So that makes these things a little bit more difficult, but you, you extract them from just getting feedback really quickly. So what we like to do when we build this out is we go core task, qualifying, resilience, intelligence, and then personality, right, as we build this as an experience. So core task, we sort of got some of that. We got some feedback uh, from you guys about how you broke it. Anyone come up with a, something that wasn't just a way of asking? So like, you know, good day, Cobber, how's about a table? <laughs> um, but was more along the lines of, uh, a qualifying question or something completely different? Yep. Um, like it was on local? Yep. So it's, hey, it's Cohen, is there any chance of the table to you tomorrow? Are you in stock? Yeah, nice. Yep. Yep. So that, that adds some interesting stuff into there, like, hey, it would be good if I recognise your mobile number coming inbound. And actually, if you look back to this, what you're sort of talking about there is intelligence, right? And that, but that's spot on. You, you sort of do that. And if we got that feedback, which we would, and we can see what everyone wrote, we go, ah, oh, that's, a, that's a good one. We need to be able to cater for that. And actually, if you didn't ask for it, we might suggest it, you know? So that's where you, the intelligence layer comes in. Anyone else? So then you're into resilience, right? When it breaks, sorry, I didn't understand that. Sorry, I didn't understand that. It's like, you're going to understand flying across the room in a second. That's, uh, and so that, that you're talking about the resilience part there, right? Exactly. You didn't, what didn't you understand? Did you not understand all of it? How are we going to frame that better? Okay, so that's a really important part. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't hear you. Yep, so 24-hour time, I get you mean putting it in or not putting in? Yeah, so format, yeah, and syntax. But what was the at symbol? You want it? You... Yeah, yeah, so that's just training language. That's easy. I mean, you can put emoji in and we can, we can uh, decipher those as well. Any, anyone sort of ask something like, hey, any other qualifying ones? Do you... Great. Yeah, so totally qualifying with the extended parameters, yeah. And what I found in doing this uh, before is when you say, hey, what time do you want the table? What time do you open? What time does the kitchen close? Right, so then you get these, well, perhaps I could have, uh, if we go back to that control the conversation principle, perhaps I could have said, what time um, would you like a table? We're open uh, from as early as six and the, and the kitchen closes at nine. And then I might have been able to provide that information having got that feedback. Or I could write another intent that tries to capture that. So there's two ways of doing it. One is just being clever with the language. The other one is being clever with the technology. But that's a great one. Which table hasn't given any feedback? Well, I'm looking at you table. You're all trying to be like, I'm a Tyrannosaurus and you're all just going to be super still. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so language. Yep, so the language ones are super easy for us to, to pick up. Uh, the other ones are where we get the real insight. Okay, so this is super uh, useful for us to then get that feedback and work out where do we map it to and where are we going to work on first. So we might just sort of go, okay, We've got some good ones in intelligence now. Let's put them in the backlog. Uh, let's get to those. We probably need to work on that resilience piece because pretty sure we've pissed some people off now. And then we've got some opportunity there as well. So um, what we might do now that you know that and you start to move to another level, you might start to map your feedback on a matrix. Okay, now 
The next thing is, this is great, I've got you all in a room, but what's the point of me having you all in a room to do user testing if I've got something that's delivered via phone and I can just, you know, mechanical turk it? Um, people know what mechanical turk is? Okay, one good. So, <laughs> um, so basically I can get a, a list of people to do a task for uh, a, a low cost. So if I say, if I recruit for the right people, and I say, this is this number, play around with it, try and break it. By the way, did anyone get feedback when they, well, let's, let's roll it back. Who actually SMS their friends? Ah, oh, any feedback? Um, oh, great. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, great. Mm. Oh, no. Okay, great. So we would map like this, but the thing I want to talk to you now is if you were going to do this and you really want to get feedback, then you need to work on where it goes wrong. So we need to work in resilience. So again, this is me working, not you. So that's good for you. <laughs> so we go back to intents. And we go to default fallback intent. And what you can see here is these are the responses. And while it's not bad in that there's variety, so it's very important to have variety in the messages that you've got, they're not that useful for me. They kind of say, sorry, excuse me, what, pardon? Huh? Like they're, they're just variations on that as a theme. Um, and the, the next one I'll get you to test takes a sort of different approach. Uh, so the approaches you can use for resilience, obviously funny 404 pages. You can just make it at a, a bit of a joke. Um, the one that I had written uh, before is, is something like, uh, sorry, can you try saying that a different way, but if I'm still acting like a moron, it's Henry's fault. He'd rather be fooling around than working on my brain. Can you take a screenshot and send it to me? Or send it to him? Now I'm gonna get spammed. Take that, Henry. All right. So now when it fails, I've got a mechanism for actually getting people, and you'd be surprised how many <laughs> how many people will spam you instantly as soon as you put that out. So now, when I fail, if you want to try that again, uh, the one that you did where you got that fail message, you should now get that, untested, of course, so demo demons there. Um, yep. So now I've got a mechanism for collecting feedback, and that's pretty important. So now I've got a user testing mechanism to get uh, direct feedback on my product and we're 55 minutes in. That's, that's pretty powerful if you're a designer. Uh, pretty powerful if you're a business person. Uh, anything where you're trying to deliver service, you can get this feedback super quickly and you can iterate super quickly. And you, you'll find, like, you know, you're, you're sort of cutting the time down from a five-day design sprint to, you know, one day you should have loads of feedback around an area. Uh, and if you do it then across channels, so if we had more time, I'd show you how we could do things like failover or how we could look at the bigger customer journey for this uh, booking. <laughs> Who was that? 
Um, oh, I know my phone's going to go crazy, isn't it? Um, if you looked at the bigger picture, you could say, okay, great, what would happen next in the customer journey? You booked it. Uh, what about those times when I send a, get a reminder text? Right? I get one of those reminder texts um, just confirming that you're coming tomorrow night. There's going to be six of you. Reply yes. For yes. <laughs> uh, or call us. And I go, I'm, I'm busy, I don't want to call you. Actually, there's just going to be five of us, or I would maybe move it, but if you're going to tell me that it's uh, going to be another seven weeks before I get a booking again, then maybe I won't move it. So it's not as black and white as the, the, the confirmation messages that you sort of get today. I want to be able to interact with it. So we could do the same thing there. You could just say, you could just say, if I cancel it, can I get a, the same booking in six weeks' time? No. Okay, well, then I'll move my other thing. Yes, I confirm, right? So you think about other opportunities to add intelligence into that process. Then you think about intelligence again. You say, well, what about on the day of the booking? Am I going to tell them about the specials, the weather, the parking, the traffic? What can I do then? And then what can I do off the back of that? Can I send them, hey, did you enjoy it? Thanks for coming. Here's a coupon, whatever it is. So you can think about the whole journey and start to map that out and do the communication across that whole path. Does that make sense, guys and girls? Okay, so we've got that one. Um, I'm going to switch. So there's one I've done a little bit more work on. And you'll see that there's quite a, quite a lot more intents in there. Uh, including allergies, high chair, uh, disabled. So then all of these things start to be in the qualified and can come in anywhere sort of space. Um, some testing emojis that sometimes work, sometimes don't. Um, I wonder if I can do the cactus one. I think it works on some keyboards and not others is what I found. Anyway. Try sending a cactus to it when I give you the number and see what happens. Um, but you can see it gets a little bit more complex and it gets complex around when do I ask that question and when do I not. So if we looked at this one, uh, we've done something else here called reflective conversations. So you know when you sit down with someone, it's, it's much more noticeable if you know it. If you're sitting down with friends, uh, you start to reflect their posture, right? Or, you know, when you're at school and everyone starts to talk the same way, uh, that's a way of sort of gaining empathy and trust. Sometimes it's uh, explicit, you do it on purpose, you know, you might be a salesperson, uh, but often it's just something that you notice that everyone sitting around at the bar is all crossing their arms, or now everyone's crossing their arms freaking out, or putting their... Uh, and that's straight, or sitting back, or both, and, and that actually sort of builds rapport. You can do a similar sort of thing here where, you know, if I say, hello, it says, hello, I'm Rufus, right? Um, but if I, if I say, yo, now I'm, now I'm slightly different, right? So you can start to be reflective in the way that I want to communicate and then you can think, I, you can use intelligence to say, I, I don't want to necessarily speak like a butler to, uh, to some little gangster and, and vice versa, right? So you can start to add those sort of levels to it. You can start to do the complicated things, I guess. Um, do you have vegetarian options? I'm probably going to say something. Yep, we have vegetarian meals. There's a little bit more not nice to vegetarian ones in there. <laughs> it's likely it didn't pop up. Um, and you can see the language there is a, is a little bit more refined. Now, where does it get racist? 
See, now it's reflecting again. Thanks, Henry, and your last name. So that one is fine because I had to change it. The, the last concept I want to tell you about is something called entities. So entities are basically a list of ex acceptable structures. If I go back to the class one, who's a little bit stupid, uh, can someone yell out the one that didn't work for them? That was pretty straightforward. What was it? Oh yeah, yeah, racist, racist. <laughs> right, straight up, straight up racist. <laughs> if you don't have a super anglicized name, you're dead to me. So, so, Cho, see you later. You can fix it. I'm not saying this is this is like this is the end of the road for us here, <laughs> obviously because it uh, because it, it did work. But you you either need a greater training set for names, uh, or you open it up to. An in, uh, if you look here. Sure, but I think we're talking about a more generalized problem where you have defined, so that's true, but you you got a, a these sort of entities, system.givenName, system.lastName has a big list of things. Uh, the challenge, good question Paulie, um, is that if I change this to, I think it's, so this, so I just change it to sys.any, that can have unexpected results, <laughs> let's, let's say. Um, it's probably fine here. Ah, it's died after that. Yeah, so it can get trapped in the in there as well. Hmm, well, you must have broken it. Let's go back to you that works. <laughs> Uh, so an important thing just to to know when you're building all this, is the, it's that idea of slot filling you see here. It's not thinking this is a new conversation. It's picking up from the last conversation where this has already happened. But it's an interesting thing, that idea of um, putting in an open field. That means when you've got lots of intents, what happens is it tries to match the input to the intent and sometimes it might actually pick that up and go, oh, this is, uh, this is something quite different. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, you know, maybe isn't what you want. So, just can keep an eye on the time. Oh, we're going quite well. So, so we've talked about building empathy and resilience. There's, there's lots of different ways of doing that. Uh, we've actually, in the pack, you'll have this blow up for each of these stages. So take a photo, but the, you'll get the actual thing as well. So introducing yourself, recognizing me, to your point. Um, loads and loads and loads and loads of training, right? So this is the bread and butter of this. All of the stuff that you said, I'll go back into the training data, put that all in, and that'll all start to learn. So you don't, I should probably be clear that it's not that I'm, it's not mapping one to one. It's not, I think someone asked that before, if I said can I have a table for four at four, does that work for a table for five at six? 
and, and yes, it does. So it understands the, the structure, not, it's not just mapping an exact field. Um, provide a huge, sorry, was there a question? Or a sneeze? Provide, uh, provide a huge variety of responses. So I often talk about, you know, I, I'm, I'm a tiny gamer, not a massive gamer, but there's a game, uh, Assassin's Creed, when it first came out, and beautiful game, right? The uh, beautiful architecture, all the costumes, everything was amazing. But they skimped on um, the audio. So when you would walk around a town, which was, you know, I can't remember which time it was, Byzantine or something like that, amazing looking. But you'd hear people say just the same thing again and again. And it, it immediately just destroyed your suspension of disbelief because people were having exactly the same conversation again and again and again and again. And you think about, it probably wouldn't have been a lot of effort to just come up with 100 you know, conversations for people to have and you, you would have had that variety. So same here, just keep on building on it, building on it, building on it. Um, be efficient. That's sort of understanding where you are, what you know about people. Reflective conversations, we talked about that a bit already. And fail gracefully. So error, humor, the ability to switch to people. Like how many of you said, I'm sick of this bloody IVR, I just want to talk to someone. Uh, companies are very good at putting IVR in the way of people. So really make sure that's right. Uh, be aware that irrelevant answers might come up. So, you know, people are weirdos, right? <laughs> I could say, hey, you know, um, what time are you getting here? And you might say, hey, Game of Thrones was good, wasn't it? And I'm like, yeah, it was. But what time are you coming? <laughs> so, you know, just, just be aware. The more human you make this thing, who knows? Uh, and be aware of questions to questions. So don't, uh, in the intelligence, don't know creepy stuff. Um, will you be breaking up with your girlfriend again <laughs> tonight, sir? Um, uh, don't pretend to be human, so that's a big one. You know, be really clear, and that comes to the resilience thing as well. Uh, and remember context. So this is a very tricky thing with bots is, don't forget what I'm talking about. Right, so which immediately you saw happen there when it was like, would you like a table? And I go, yes. And he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. And you go, I'd like a table. I still don't know what you're talking about. You just asked me, do I want a table? Now you forgot me, we're talking about a table. And you asked me a yes or no question. And I said yes. And you didn't know what I was talking about. So you can see where a few of those principles come in there. Controlling the conversation, uh, remembering context. And this is something that if you're interested in playing around in here, uh, a little humanity, think about the thing that I just said uh, about Game of Thrones, right? That maybe throw in a little bit of randomness. So if you are halfway through the booking and um, you, know, you have to be careful, you need to sort of throw something out that isn't going to get a response. Uh, so it might, it might well, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, for example, but it could be something like, uh, what's your first name, Mary? Oh, Mary's my mother's name, which I obviously you wouldn't do because you're not human, but it could be things like that, or it could be just be, if, if you were ringing up a really good restaurant, you, you would hope that the people there don't talk to you like robots. They have a conversation with you. So that's something to think about. Okay, so... I'm going to give you, so I've built some resilience that we saw, um, and then we looked at building out the content model now a little bit with this number. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing for the next five minutes. Just try and break this one. Uh, there's more to break here, so <laughs> I'm sure you will. It, and to be honest, the same things will break it in terms of if you want uh, by the table, I think it might have inside and outside. But there's one other thing, a concept that I want to get you across before we finish as well. So text away. I'll see.
Oh, nice feedback. And you know it's slow, it's SMS, it's not as fast as if we um, had built it into Messenger or something like that, but it didn't take us long. So that's the important thing. And then the way that we built it in API.ai, we can port it to uh, Facebook Messenger. But how many people here have got a chat bot installed on their Facebook Messenger? Put your hand up. So you see far less cut through than SMS, right? So there's a, there's, a, there's a reason we do SMS as a channel. How are we going in the breaking? Hands up who's broken it. Oh. Ah. Is your first name Cohen? Uh, racist. Yeah. Uh. Ah, interesting. Send me a text. I haven't looked into that, to be honest. I think it probably uh, would learn. Yeah, 